And that is an urgent question in the name of uh, Michael Mara. To ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on SQA exam guidance in light of reports of significant concern being raised across the sector regarding the inconsistency and, and inadequacy of what has been provided. Cabinet Secretary. The SQA are rightly operationally independent of government. However, following the concerns raised by learners over the past few days, the government has sought and received written reassurances from the SQA that the revision support materials were subject to quality assurance processes and subject teachers and learners were involved in developing the SQA's approach to the materials. SQA will be making more detailed information available on the revision support process, including involvement of teachers and learners. The SQA has also agreed to publish information in relation to the modifications to assessment already made as part of the revision support. This will demonstrate the package of support material available to learners for each course to address disruptions to learning. I will continue to listen carefully to learners, parents and teaching staff to ensure that fairness is at the centre of this year's exam diet. Michael Mara. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. This has been another truly pitiful week in this Government's handling of education. Young people have called this guidance insulting, awful, a joke and patronising. Teachers have said, I am struggling to believe what I have just read. They have called it the Mariana Trench of uselessness. The Children's Commissioner has said it fails to meet the needs and expectations of young people and the teaching staff who support them. The EIS are consulting members on their utility. Teachers have called them laughable, parents inequitable, and members of the Youth, Par youth Parliament have been in disconsolate. Read all the questions. Check your spelling. It's the kind of stuff you shout down the path to your kids when they're going to the exams. What has been produced so far is far from the expectations of pupils and staff created by the Cabinet Secretary. The materials are not fit for purpose, and there are wide concerns about the lack of consistency between them. Cabinet Secretary, you said in announcing Scenario 2 that su this support is aimed at helping to reduce the stress for learners in preparing for their exams and allowing them to maximise the performance. Yet again, the actions of this Government and the SQA are the cause of the stress. So what urgent action will now, you now take to rectify this mess? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I've mentioned in my original answer the action that the SQA, who is of course responsible for the uh, revision support, uh, that they will be taking. But I think a very important point, which I did raise again during my original answer, was that a key consideration at this point was what additional material could be provided on top of the very significant modifications that were already in place while maintaining the integrity and credibility of the qualifications. So there has always been a, a, a clear distinction about the fact that there would have to be different modifications in place uh, and the same approach could not be taken across different subjects at this point. That is because the modifications um, that were announced very early on in the process were different. So subjects are assessed differently. There will therefore be variability across subjects. The modifications therefore will also be different across subjects because of that. In a small number of cases, study guides were provided because specific revision support was not deemed to be possible because of the types of modifications that were made earlier on in the process. Uh, but I hope that the work that the SQA um, has uh, said that they will take out will provide some reassurance and some context uh, to the decisions that they have taken and the work that they have published earlier on this week. Michael Mara. Uh, President Officer, I struggle to find much reassurance in that answer, I have to say, and I think parents and pupils will be the same. We are now firmly in the third year of exam chaos. Two years of disrupted learning, 60 years who have known nothing but disruption to their senior phase, and a government that seems that it could not care less. It will not even assess the full impact of what has happened to our young people. So I ask the Cabinet Sec Secretary, when will the government publish full details of study support across Scotland so they can be scrutinised and improved prior to being put in place? What action has been taken to ensure equitable access to that support? And it is now abundantly clear that the mitigations in place before exams take place are wholly inadequate to deal with the scale of disruption young people have faced. What extra mitigations are planned to deal with the exceptional circumstances in the appeals process? Who will the Cabinet Secretary work with to make sure that her appeal system for once, for once, actually works for the young people insulted this week and betrayed for years by this government? Cabinet Secretary. I would, 
I have to say, inherently disagree uh, with uh, the member's context that he sets for the um, assessments that were in place last year. Uh, there were uh, a, a very, very a large number of young people who had, of course, been through exceptionally difficult circumstances, but who did receive um, exceptionally good uh, assessment results in that process and have gone on to positive destinations from that. So the process um, last year, while I appreciate was exceptionally stressful and difficult um, for young people, they are to be commended for the fact that they came out of that uh, with the uh, results that they did. The appeals process is, of course, a matter for the SQA, which is independent from government, and they have uh, made details um, on that available. There will be further details to follow. When it comes to study support, I think a very important aspect that members often ask me uh, to bear in mind is that we should not dictate from the centre uh, what is right for every local authority or indeed for every school. So while there is ongoing support through eSchool and through West Online for the support that is available as we speak this week and ongoing to support learners uh, with their work, there is also additional money that has been provided, £4 million that has been provided uh, by the Scottish Government to local authorities to provide Easter study support sessions. Now, because we do appreciate uh, and respect that local authorities will know best and schools will know best um, how to support learners in their area, it is for local authorities to determine how best that money should be spent. I think that is the right way to go about it, to trust local authorities and trust the schools to know what is best to be able to supplement what they already had in place with the additional funding that we have given. Thank you. There is a considerable amount of interest in this um, urgent question. I am minded to take as many of the um, supplementaries as I can, but the questions will need to be briefer than Mr Mara's, and the response is likewise um, a little briefer. Uh, first, Oliver Mundell. Thank you, President Officer. On the 6th of October last year, I asked the Cabinet Secretary to personally step in and sort out the SQA. I was told they had her full confidence. In reality, they have presided over the most shameless shambles yet, with pupils and teachers being taken for fools. The support being offered is a joke and insults the intelligence of our young people. Given the Cabinet Secretary refused to act on repeated warnings, does she now take full responsibility for damaging the life chances of our young people? And if she can't do the right thing and say sorry, will she at least guarantee this is the last year the SQA are allowed anywhere near these decisions? Cabinet Secretary. Well, as the member will be aware, there will be a, a further statement that I will make after this urgent question on the uh, future of our national agencies. Uh, but what I am very clear is that the SQA is, of, of course, and quite rightly, um, operationally independent uh, from government, and they will take the decisions uh, that they need to take um, on this year's exam diet um, and, indeed, on next year's as well. They will, of course, continue to do that through discussions with uh, stakeholders, um, particularly including young people. I have set out in my uh, previous answers the work that the SQA has undertaken around quality assurance and how they are determined um, to make that public and to attempt to reassure through that process the work that they have undertaken um, on this issue. And I would refer Mr Mundell to that uh, when it is published. And briefly, Willie Rennie. This was supposed to be the grand plan, to show that lessons had been learned. But for the third year in a row, we have yet more chaos. The expectations for the SQA were low, but there is real anger now. Yet the Cabinet Secretary refuses to take more action. How bad does it have to get before the Cabinet Secretary steps in and does something? Cabinet Secretary. Well, once again, I said earlier that, of course, the government has sought reassurances uh, from the SQA around the quality assurance process that has been undertaken and the work that the SQA will uh, now undertake to ensure that that work is made uh, more publicly available, and particularly around uh, the context of what is um, happening here. So the modifications, the revision support, and importantly, the work that is ongoing, as I say, through eSchool um, and um, other online measures to support uh, students and then the work that is going on in Easter. And that uh, process through modifications, revision support and then the support that is uh, happening now and in Easter is a package that learners can be reassured will support them through the exam process. And finally, briefly, Ross Greer. 
Thank you. It's extremely hard to imagine how these guides were the result of a process where young people were consulted and genuinely listened to. Could the Cabinet Secretary um, expand on her earlier point about how young people were actually engaged in the process and if NASQA learner panels were shown drafts of the guides before they were published? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I, I, I thank Ross Gere for that question. He does, of course, raise a very important point about the, the um, input of learners themselves. I would point to the fact that when we are talking about uh, revision guidance and, for example, uh, guidance that may include information about what is about to be an exam, in an exam, uh, there is obviously that context to be borne in mind when then um, sharing that information, uh, particularly with young people who might be then sitting that exam, because if we're sharing drafts of these aspects, then what will be happening at the end um, will, will, of course, uh, have an impact on the knowledge that those learners have about the exams that they may sit. In saying that, though, this is, of course, one of the areas uh, where we have sought reassurances uh, from the SQA, and they are, um, of course, um, going to be making more information available about that quality assurance process and the role that learners played in that. But I take his point uh, that many learners uh, have said on social media and in emails their concerns about this, and I think that is why it is important that the SQA are taking the proactive state, uh, um, action that they are today to be able to, I hope, provide some reassurance on this issue. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. I am sorry to those members I was not able to call, but it is time uh, to move on to the next item of business. But there will be a brief pause before we do so. Thank you.